Welcome back then to another video and today we are unboxing and taking our first look at the GEP RC Darks to 16. We haven't even unboxed this thing yet. Now, we are under a storm in the UK today, so this may just be a first look and unboxing video, but you guys have been asking and asking and asking for this. So as soon as it's arrived, I thought, well, let's get it unboxed and take a first look at it. GEP RC kindly sent me this. This is the Darks to 16 04 Pro ELRS version. You can see all the details on the side of the box there. This okay, so first things first is you're going to see the drone inside the box, obviously. And we've got a spare canopy here for your 04 Pro. And in line, if I, we'll have a look at all the, uh, all the other stuff shortly. But in line with what manufacturers are doing now, GEP RC have provided us with obviously the orange one that comes with it. And we'll, we'll get the camera off and we'll do a close up and everything later on. Um, but they've also provided us with a black version and one that's obviously in case you break it of course but two that's also in case you want to be a little bit more stealthy because obviously if you've got something like this flying through there and it's bright orange people are going to see it you might want to be more stealthy personally from my point of view i prefer it like this because it helps my spot to be able to see it and then they can see obviously which way round and which way up it is because you've got black on the front there with the camera and obviously orange there You've got a spare set of ducts there. You've got a USB cable. So it's a micro USB. Ir ironically, anyone who watched the videos from the weekend will have known I specifically bought a brand new long micro USB cable because I've moved the PC. I've got a proper PC in this room now. Uh, and GEPRC have sent me a long one. So brilliant. Thanks, GEPRC. I appreciate that. Uh, let me move this knife out of the way before I chop my hands apart. Okay, so in this package in here, what have we got? So if we look at the drone, just very quickly, we can see on the back, we've got these low profile 04 Pro antennas and this is your ELRS antenna here. In the box, they've also included, have they included two? They have included two. Now this is brilliant because for anybody that doesn't know, these standard 04 Pro antennas are about 20 pound or $20 each and you need two of them so the fact that they've included them is absolutely brilliant that really does help us you've got a gep rc keyring which i've already got one of these on my keyring so i'll give that one to boy wonder uh, some spare screws some spare grommets more screws more grommets more screws more grommets basically you can rebuild the whole thing by the looks of this you've also got a spare set of low profile antennas there as well Hopefully that's not too much glare on there. More screws, a spare set or two spare sets of props, much needed. Uh, more screws, a prop tool. Although again, I will highly recommend my friend Chris. Uh, he's given us all this really cool free tool. This is called the proper dial. Uh, we added some uh, eyes to it for reasons uh, but the proper dial is brilliant because the thing is with these quite often you can break a prop getting it off but with this it's tpu so you just put it around the prop uh, you just put it around the prop like this pull it up and I'll pull one of the eyes off uh, and you don't damage the props by doing it so uh, i'll leave a link to the stl in the description down below excuse me i'm just getting my finger stuck you've got then a Spare battery, a couple of spare battery grips. Just looking at where they actually go because you've got this TPU here. Interesting. Oh well, never mind. Uh, spare bit of TPU there, the screwdriver, a spare 04 Pro cable. Why might you need that? Well, if you buy the ELRS version and you later on want to go to the DJI S Bus system, I don't know why you would, but you might do. You might find that the cable has been cut on the yellow on the S-Bus lead because sometimes if you leave the S-Bus lead on, it can cause problems. So GEPRC giving you another one of these uh, will avoid any problems like that. Pair of tweezers, pair of tweezers, if you want a pair of tweezers. And the most important thing in this box here is not the drone, is not all the spare parts, is not the tools, but it is, of course, the stickers. Let's be fair. So we've got a Darkster sticker on Mark V, TQ, Vapor 04, Cinelog 30, Moz 7. And that is an initial first look at unboxing the GEP RC. Let's throw everything back in here now. The GEP RC Darkster 16. And like I say, 
some of the accessories in here are brilliant. The fact that you've got forty dollars worth of O4 Pro antennas, when a lot of companies, when they replace it with their own ones, they don't actually replace them in the box. So that's really, really nice to see. Um, it's a 2S, so you're going to want something like a 550. But we'll look at all that. Like I said, we are under a storm here in the UK today. So what I'm going to do, whilst I've got it on the desk, is let's plug it in. And we can see underneath there, we have got the cable. We have got the uh, micro USB slot. And we'll just, we could put it upside down. But we'll try and do something just so it looks a bit better on camera for you guys. And we'll have a look through our ELRS setup. We'll have a look through our beta flight setup. We'll get it we'll connected, connected to, to our, our radio. radio. Just, just give, me, just a give me a second to start, to start my, my screen, screen recorder off. off. Okay. So we're going to click connect and we're going to have a look to make sure everything's set up. And in the setup page, all we're looking for essentially is that we've got an MSP selected, which we do, and a serial selected, which we do. Brilliant. We don't need to worry about anything else and don't change or adjust anything in here if you don't know what you're doing, because this will stop your drone working if you don't know what you're doing. If you need advice, comment down below. Always willing to help. Okay, first thing to check is that our arming angle is set to 180 degrees. For anybody that doesn't know what that means is if you've crashed it upside down in a tree and you want to start the props and shake it out of that tree, if that's not set to 180 degrees, you're not able to do that. We've got RX Lost beepers and beacons set. Now we're going to be using LIHV, so we need to make sure that this is set to 4.4 cells. The reason, sorry, 4.4 volts per cell. The reason we do that, if we set it to 4.3, and we charge an LIHV to 4.35. When you put your goggles on, your OSD will see it as a, a discharged 1S as opposed to a fully charged, or sorry, a discharged 3S, sorry, as opposed to a fully charged 2S. Bear that in mind. But capacity have already done that, so we don't need to worry. There is no GPS on this, so failsafe is set to drop. And if we go into the PID tune, if anybody needs a copy of the PID tune, here it is. I am intending to start a website. If anybody out there can uh, can help recommend somebody to, to build a website on the cheap, the channel isn't making any profit at the minute. So if anybody can help or recommend anybody on the cheap to do a website, what I want to do is all of the stuff I review, I also want to put on a web page with all downloads and stuff for you to just download it. But for now, there is the PID tune and here is the filter tune. And now in rates, personally, the one thing that I will always recommend to everybody is you use actual rates and you set your center sensitivity to 10. When it comes to your actual rates, that's a very personal preference. And this is what I do. And for the first flight of any drone, I will always add around about 0.3 of Expo. <clears throat> and then with each flight after that, I will gradually reduce it till it's about 0.1, give or take. So in our receiver tab now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our controller and the closest one to me happens to be the TX-15. So we'll use the TX-15. See if the three power method will work. Okay, so if you look there now, you should be able to see that we are double flashing. So we can now bind it. Normally that doing it in beta flight like that will actually work, but it, sometimes it doesn't. So do it this way. Not a problem. Sometimes it is trial and error. So now what we need to do is press system, express LRS, scroll down to where it says bind once it's all loaded and it will now bind with it. There we go. So the first thing we're gonna to need to check is to make sure that our controller is set to the right, what's called channel mapping. And that basically just means that when we press this button, this one, it rolls. And when we press this one, it pitches. And when we press this one, it yaws. And this is the throttle. But what you also need to do is not only just make sure that it works, but just make sure it goes the right way. Ah, interesting. There we go. Look. So left is left, right is right. I actually thought for a second I'd press the wrong one. Forward, back, left, right. And then our throttle is there. So everything is working exactly how it should be. Moving to our modes setup now. And Automatically in here, you've got arm, angle, and beeper. I will use a pre-arm on this because that's just what I do for safety. 
if I set, I think, yeah. So if I change that, and then we'll change. So if you're not sure which one of your switches corresponds to which, all you need to do is press auto on here like this, and then press whichever switch you want. So as an example for this particular one, I'm going to press this. And we can see that the horizontal and vertical bars cross each other, which means that that's when it's going to be activated when I press it. And when I let go, it's going to be deactivated. Now, I did say I was going to set up a prearm, didn't I? But there's no prearm here. So what do you do? We can, if we look up here, we can see it says hide unused modes. And that shows us then every mode we need. Like I said, we don't have GPS, so we don't need to worry about the GPS rescue, position hold, or anything like that. Scroll right all the way down to prearm, add range, leave it as auto, move this to this side because I know that's where they're going to line up. But if you don't know, all you have to do is press the switch that you want. It's automatically selected aux one and it's moved the horizontal and vertical bars together. If you need to move it because it's in the middle, then you just slide it backwards and forwards and hit save. And we've now set it up. That's it. We don't need to do anything else now. Uh, everything else in here set up. The only thing you might want to do is go into your OSD tab and have a look at how that OSD tab is set up. And you might want to just fine tune it and adjust it to your own personal preferences. But as for setup, that's it. It's all done. So the last thing then that we need to do now is to check to make sure the O4 Pro is activated and ready to go. For this, pop a lipo in, remember it's a 2S, and open up the DJI Assistant to slash, con or brackets, consumer drone series, not DJI Assistant 2. It's important, otherwise it won't work. Okay, plug in your USB, and we've got a nice little bung for the 04 there, which is lovely. And if we maximize this, it will then tell us whether we need to activate it or not. Hence putting the lipo in first. If you don't put the lipo in, it won't tell you it needs activating. Now, okay, so this is good. It's been activated, but we need to update it. So I'm just gonna take the lipo out. The camera has actually just knocked itself off a second, but we've got the screen recorder on and we'll talk you through this. You don't really necessarily need the uh, the camera on, do we? Okay. So it'll reconnect. We've taken the lipo out, it's gonna reconnect and we've done that so it doesn't overheat. And also I don't know how much charge is on that lipo. But it's important to remember, plug the lipo in first before plugging the cable in, otherwise it won't tell you if it needs activating. But this has been activated, it just needs to be updated. Okay, and it's done, it's updated. So if you just click back now and you'll see that it offers you to refresh or downgrade now, showing that we've got the most up-to-date version, which is from the 9th of June, 2025. It just leaves me now to, to weigh it with uh, this, let me just double check this 720 mm fits. It doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh it with a 530 mm. If you just give me one second. Not that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So before we can get out after the storm passes here in the UK, it just leaves me one more job left to do. And that is to weigh this thing. And we're going to weigh it with a 530mm 2S. Remember, it takes a 2S lipo. Uh, so without any lipos, it's 76 grams. And then with a lipo or a 530 gram lipo, or 530mm lipo, sorry, it's 104 grams. Now, for anybody who's worried about the 100 gram limit of remote ID coming into the UK next year, you can probably get <clears throat> a lighter lipo to put on this to keep it under that 100 gram limit. But just bear in mind that that limit it isn't necessarily coming to FPV straight away at the beginning of the year, maybe a couple of years before it actually touches FPV in the UK anyway. And that is the whole setup of the Gepasi Darkster 16. As soon as this weather changes, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to start flying it and I'm going to start answering your questions. But if you've got any questions in the meantime, please do drop them in the comments down below. This has been a first look 
and help with setup of a Darkster 16 from Gap RC. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with what I see, but let's get out there and fly it as soon as we possibly can. Peace out.